My HGV Insurance is proud to sponsor Trucking TV. Let us take the stress out of arranging your HGV Insurance. Welcome to the third and final part of our look at Brian J. Nunn's Scania 80 and 142. This time we're in the 142 cab and looking back at his fleet of the late 1980s. I noticed one day in my youth when I put my hand out like this, yeah. I'm over a foot away from the glass and I thought, why is that? I think it came about in my head that I couldn't clean the screen when I was driving once, right. when I was driving a little scan. And it made me think that an FL10, so a little Volvo, the yeah. screen would be here, or a DAF. Right. And I thought, what's the point of that? Because I've got less bunk depth behind me. Right. But this is my crumple zone, isn't it? If I hit a lorry up the arse at 50 mile an hour, I need something in front of me, and this is that bit that's going... Right. I need that extra foot, and the strength of the metal in this cab and what's clever about this is that the seat, if I was squashed, the seat can go, the bunk is lower than the seat. Right. So this seat could go right into the back of the cab, whereas some bunks are higher than the seat. So if I get hit, boom, I'm going to get squashed because yeah. there's nowhere to go. Yeah. And that's daft, isn't it? I've driven this quite a lot, solo. I've never had a trailer on it, took it to several shows. Right. And I just love being in it. Look at the size of this steering wheel. And it's just so simple and solid. It's not very big, it's not very comfortable to sleep in, to be honest, and I have slept in it. When I've got a choice, I don't. I get in some, something else. If there's right. a demo there that's empty, I'll sleep in that. Has it got twin bunks or single yeah, bunks? it's got twin bunks. This one will fold down right. to here. That's shut back at the moment. Right. But then you've got a rack here that stops your stuff on the top bunk falling on you if you right. break hard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's a lovely, it is a lovely, but to compare this bunk with a modern bunk, this is, this is a joke. The actual width of it and the depth of it, and that you're sort of over here it's amazing really and you can see mm. it's not very wide right but it's much a step up from that from the little fold yeah, yeah. bunk in yeah, a day yeah. cab where i had to yeah. move everything to be able but you've got proper space yeah you? your own space yeah and this has got curtains that hasn't has it right. almost modern would you say well it's it just it hasn't got the modern electronics right. is the answer the ethos of having a speedo air gauge battery gauge oil pressure that's not it's still there now yeah. in some shape isn't it yeah but each, each model, 76, O series, 1 series, 2 series, 3 series, 4 series, R series, 5 series, they're, well, they're, they're now on an S series, and it's just come out. I've seen my first new shape Scania's, and they had a lot of abuse when they first came out. They, they looked like a dust cart. Yeah. But that's just a lot of people anti-Scania comparing it to an old Dennis dust. It doesn't look like a dust cart. <laughs> it's, it's much more smooth and rounded yeah. and refined. And, yeah. And they're growing on me. I'm always, when I see a new manufacturer's product, I think, what? Well, it always looks odd because you're not used to it. But when you see it in a, somebody's livery, like Turner's or Richard Long's, it makes it look familiar. And suddenly you think, oh, I don't know. It's like when Maritime had the first FHs yeah. around yeah. in the Series 4, and they had that black bit under the windscreen. I thought, I don't like that. It looks like it's not finished. But people have started painting them now. And I've driven one of them. I've only had, what a truck. Mm. You can't fault it. The only thing is the handbrake. It hasn't got a lever like this. Right. It's got a little square thing you push in, and I don't like it because I don't think it's off or on. I don't right. trust the. Yeah. You can't the see there's a the difference. Yeah. But other than that, the visibility on it and the lump, the quietness, it's so quiet. Mm. You can't hear it running. And they are incredible. They don't break down much. But for the use they get, you think they break down all the time. Mm. There was a Dodge John Whedon had in. 76 it broke down every week for nine months and then he broke him it right. was rubbish it was absolute junk right. and the dealer agreed to take it away and sell him something else because it was he said this is going to break you isn't it and that's what they did <laughs> that's so terrible but isn't that terrible amazing story i am taking this to fox Fest right, right. as a driver and an exhibitor right. and i'm taking a little 110 as well excellent okay and brian will bring that his little lady right. and his mate Simon who drives the ball nose will be bringing that and Annie wants to bring her she's got a 4 series or an R series as a 13 plate I think right. so we'll have a range of we should have 4 O'Briens there as a stepping stone as promised here's Simon looking back nearly 30 years 
This is Brian's photograph that I borrowed and copied to put in the 142 when I took it to shows. This was, we, he's not sure when this was taken, but if, this was new, E1 GBJ 156, 1st of August 87. So that must be Truckfest 88, which was August, because it couldn't have been Truckfest 87 because it would have been May and he hadn't got it. So this, this was his flagship, the 142, and these are his 112s, all R cabs. I think they were all tag axles, the six wheelers, I think. A57 JRT, C80XNG, C673RRT, D355BGV, D972YBJ. Can't remember the other one. There were seven. A, two Ds, two Cs, B, C, A, E. Not sure. But that was, that was quite a fleet in its day. Yeah to be proud of. A lot of people didn't have trucks like this. They were on top of the job. Big motors. That could do it. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people were still running underpowered small driver stuff. It wasn't built for a driver to use. It was the governor's motor. They didn't sit in it and they didn't care. They were cheap and they were reliable and they did the work. And when it comes to refinements, they're not interested, are they? Because they're not benefiting from it. They're too stupid to see a happy driver is an efficient driver. Hope, hope, hopefully, yeah. but you give a man a tool he doesn't like and he will wreck it. When you look at those now, most of them were long gone. There aren't many like this about. No. There, are there? there aren't. No. There, there aren't many of eight. No. 112s, 142s, no. I mean, this is 88, 98, 08. It's nearly 30 years ago. And most companies now are run with a three year lifespan on their vehicles. They're all leased three years old, they trade them in for three, another batch of new ones and they're out. I've seen 62 plates and 12 plates on flat racks at Felixstowe this week going for export. And I thought, what? They're a bit new to be exported. And then you think, hang on, they're five years old. And they're gone to Africa for another life. So to have anything of 30 years old in one piece that runs is an achievement, isn't it? Great achievement. When you look at that kind of market, that export market, that goes on all the time, doesn't yes, it? And that it's means a continual, that we can keep doing yes, it. Yes, it's a continual. But I see problems because we've now got too technical for third world countries and they don't want them. They want manual gearboxes with a, a, a manual fill pump, I call it. They don't want all this electronic stuff. And the residuals on that stuff isn't good because the export market's poor for technical stuff. But this has been forced on us by the EU, hasn't it? Is emissions. So they create the standard that the manufacturers have to comply to, that we don't want it, we've, but there's, there's nothing else to buy, is it? You can't go into London with a Euro 1 engine. So what's the good of having one? If that's where your work is, you can't have it. The other thing that's coming through gradually is more and more on, on new cabs as well, isn't it? They're getting more complicated. Definitely. More complicated. It's all electronic, but I'm, I'm not really... I'm not a fan of, I want to drive the truck. That's my job, isn't it? Yeah. I don't want electrics telling me I'm now too close to the vehicle in front. I'm quite capable of doing that. And I still see drivers out there now tailgating. They frighten me to death because they're not going to stop and they can't see. But it all comes down to education. Why has the fast lane got more traffic in it than the slow lane? That's what I don't understand. And they're going slower than I am in the slow lane. And the other thing that gets to some of the drivers that we've been out with, is that the electronics tell them what to do, tells the engine how to run, disregards what you're putting in through the throttle. Through it's, very, it. it's very clever, but I still say we're getting into a, the driver's mode where they've took your brain out and you're actually a steering wheel attendant. You're not there to think because it's thinking for you. I do know of some people who've had these space breakers turned off and they've hit cars up the arse because someone's turned it off and they didn't know and they were waiting for it to slow it down and it didn't. Well, that's ridiculous, isn't it? That is scary. Thanks for joining us for this look at Brian Jane Nunn's pair of preserved Scanniers. Don't forget that you can see them live at truck shows around the east of England and usually have a chat with Brian himself and Simon. They're almost always on hand for a natter. See you soon. Why not give us a call on 0161 410 1061 when you're arranging your HGV insurance or visit our website at www.myhgvinsurance.co.uk 
or our Facebook page at HGV Insurance. And let us take the stress out of arranging your HGV insurance.